Hi guys and welcome to part 2 on this Mustang respray. So in part 1 in the comments Clevo351 asked if we could do some blocking work in the next video. So I have made this part 2 basically about the primer blocking um, and the process that I go through and then at the end we've got a section with the booth cleaned out and then also I've added um, something new at the end of this video which is a time lapse of the masking stage just so you guys can get a bit of an idea of that and then in part three we're going to move on to uh, the paint and the lacquer so as I said at the start this video section was requested by one of our viewers and if the channel is anything you know it needs to be for the viewers so this section now the rest of the car has already been done and I'm just going to run you through my process on this door. This is the prep work that I'm doing on this car to try and make sure it's nice and flat for the customer. If you've watched part one, you'll know that we gave this four really good coats of high build, so there's plenty on there so I could block this down. So, what I'm using is I'm using the long bed sanding block and I've got a P240 on the block. Now, I'm giving it a really nice, good, even, solid block down just to try and make sure that this car is smoothed out as best we can get it for the budget that this customer's got. The problem with this car when it came in was it had a lot of paint in its time and it had a lot of rough paint. The panels were a bit up and down, there was plenty of waves in them and we'd have to do quite a bit of skimming with stopper and a few little bits of filler in places to try and straighten the car out. The car itself, it wasn't rotten or anything like that. You know, there was no major, major damage on it. It was basically, it's just had a bit of an hard life um, from the paintwork side. So, we've got all this car prepped. We've got it all smoothed down as best we can. We've given it four real solid coats of high build. Now, we're going to give it a really nice, good, even block down. Now, I've been asked in previous videos why I sometimes don't use guide coat on jobs like this. Now, as you can see here, this car hasn't been guide coated. There's no dry guide coat, there's no wet guide coat. This brand of high build that we used in part one, the Capsi, is really good on respray work like this. Because as you can see, as I'm sanding this down, the primer itself does change its colour tone. So a lot of the time, you don't even need to put any guide coat near this primer. Because visually, you can see what you are doing really, really well. Um, and as you'll see in a bit, I've also pointed out on this door a little bit that I'd missed in the centre. Um, I don't know if I'd missed it in a bit of filler or it just had a chip in the door that I'd missed blocking out when we were at the prep stage. So I've also included uh, a little bit of pin removal and also a little bit of a rework on the edge of that door where I wasn't quite happy with it. And then... We're going to go through the sanding stage with the P400 on the DA and what we're going to do is once this is all, this door's all been blocked down we're going to DA this door down to remove all these 240 scratches and leave it at a P400 because this is just going in a straight solid white base coat so a 400 is more than smooth enough and then we can start putting the lacquer on top of that so for now, we're just going down to the blocking stage. So as you can see, I'm working through this door nice and even, you know, nice even strokes. Keep your block nice and flat. Don't ever try and dig the edges in. Don't try and get it on an angle. Just keep it nice and flat, a nice even motion going across the panel and you'll block these panels out nice and flat. Now, because this primer has got that colour change when you're sanding it, you can get a really good idea of how flat you go in just by the guide that the primer is doing itself. If your primer that you use doesn't give a slight colour change like this, then what I would recommend is use some guide coat because then you'll get a good idea when you're blocking it down. So all I've done here is I've just changed the camera angle. And you can see there, I'm just pointing out that little pinhole area that we're going to rectify 
um, in a few minutes. So again, you can see there really clearly that as I'm blocking this primer, this primer changes colour nicely. So we've got a really good visual aid. But even though you've got a visual aid, you still need to check everything by hand. You know, by eye is one thing, but also make sure you run your hand along it. You know, two is better than one, as they say. So if you've got a good visual aid, use your hand, feel the panel, see how it feels to you. You know, if it doesn't feel quite right, then you may need to block a bit more in an area, or you may have a low spot. You know, just it's something that you're going to learn over time. So again, we're just running through the blocking stage. Now, I'm trying to keep this a nice, even, same amount of pressure, nice and even. You don't need to dig the really try and dig the block into the door. You just want a nice and light pressure on the block and let the sandpaper do its work. And you'll find then that you'll end up with a lot straighter panel um, and a lot less arm make if you want. So at this stage, I'm going to leave the blocking part there. So basically what we've done is we've blocked the whole car over in exactly the same way every panel we've gone across blocked every panel out inch by inch it does take time but at the end of the day taking a little bit of pride in what you're doing like this will make such a cleaner car at the end of it so here we go now all we're going to do is we're just going to rectify these little areas that i wasn't quite happy with we've got a little low spot at the bottom We've got this little edge on the door here, which I'm not happy with. And we've got the little pinholes in the middle that I said about before. And what we're going to use for this is something that was sent out from Spray Guns Direct. This is the Evercoat Easy Sand Filler. It's self-leveling, um, fine filler if you want. It's really nice stuff. It's brilliant for work like this. It's also brilliant for skimming up panels, etc. But I have made a separate video for that. As soon as I get time, I will get that edited up and add it into the product review section for you guys to have a look at so but for the sake of this video we're just going to carry on with this job um, so this stuff makes it up really nice and um, the best way of doing it is to try and make sure you push the air out of it it's really hard to get this stuff to actually pin all so at this stage where you're doing your last tiny little bits of fine filler where you might have missed little tiny sections and you just want to give it a real tiny little bit of a skim so that we don't have to go mad with the primer again all over the car and start messing around with it this stuff's ideal and it also sands really really well so what we're not going to end up doing is like you do with some of the fine fillers you're gonna because it sets so hard so fast you're gonna end up blocking your panel uneven when you try and sand this down so this stuff it goes in nice it flows out well and it sounds so easy you can keep your panels perfectly flat so if you're a shop like us and you do a lot of big repairs or even little repairs it doesn't really make any difference personally i would recommend giving this stuff a try because i am really impressed with it so what we've done there is we've got them areas uh, just filled in what we're going to do is i've got an 80 here on the little block and then I've got a 180 a 240 for the long block so with the 180 all I'm going to do is just very lightly just rough the top of it off nothing more we're not going to start cutting into this primer and leaving massive scratches everywhere we're literally just a tiny bit of pressure just to nib the top of this off which will just help us when we get the 180 then to block this into the panel perfect so then once you've done this with the 180, we're then going to uh, with the 80, sorry, we're then going to take the long block here, and we're going to use the P180. Now I'm using the long block on this, so that we're going to be blocking the whole area of the door. If you try and concentrate on that small part, I can pretty much guarantee you that you're going to end up leaving yourself with a lump or a low spot because the block's not going to be big enough to carry across it and block it out nicely and as you can see on that first section of that door even with a 180 this stuff just falls off um, and it is with it being a two-pack product 
rather than a one pack product like some of the sealers and some of the putties there is no sink so we don't have to worry about say like the 3m putty where you put it in and then you come back 10 minutes later and you block it off and it's low because it sinks this stuff doesn't so all we're going to do with the repair wise is exactly the same as we did with the door we've just blocked it all off with the 180 to make sure that's nice and flat and the rest of the door at this point is finished with a 240 so now we're just going to give this a light rub over now with the 240 just to make sure that these little areas are now the same prep level as the rest of the door obviously if you've got any curved sections then you, like i'm doing here grab yourself a da disc round off any edges get in those little grooves that you can't get the block into and make sure all them are smoothed out nice and then we're going to move over to the da with the interface pad in a second and we're going to use a p400 and we're going to run over all these panels with the p400 just to increase the prep level from the 240 up to the 400 which at 400 you are perfectly fine to be putting a solid color base coat or a solid color straight gloss over with no issues so there we go that's those little areas rectified and also there's a little low spot here which i did the same but i haven't included it in the footage just because then the footage you'll be getting a bit too long um, the video is about 15 minutes as it stands anyway so now what we're doing is we're taking the 400 on the da with the interface pad like i said now we're not removing any peel we're not blocking this down the only reason we are doing this now is just to refine those scratches down to a nice grade that we're not going to get any problems when we come to put the base coat on and as you can see even though we've blocked this car really heavily with the 240 and we've sanded it with the 400 after there are still only a few cut throughs on the whole car that's because we've used um, four coats of high build which obviously we've taken a lot off um, during this process but all it leaves us now is these little filler areas and these little cut throughs because the prep level we're just going to use a small amount of 1k high build over those quick nib off and then we're ready for paint so there's no repriming and infrared lamping and messing around right so for this part two i'm going to leave this here if you stay around for a few seconds more we've got the shots of the boob cleaned out the car cleaned down and it all on masked and then we've got this short little time lapse section at the end of the masking if you enjoy that time lapse section at the end guys let me know and we'll start including that in more of the videos for you then the, the masking stage isn't being left out so thanks again guys for watching i hope for you guys that wanted to see this section that this is you know what you wanted to see and there's enough info in there for you if you like the video give it a thumbs up and don't forget if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe guys and i'll see you again soon for part three